Hi, I'm Joe Dante. About a year ago, we did a Trailers from Hell live show where a bunch of gurus got up in front of an audience and basically talked about whatever trailer uh, they wanted to talk about. And having not previewed it, it was all extemporaneous. And Larry Cohen uh, really dumped, rather eloquently, on uh, Lady from Shanghai. Um, I thought he really went a little overboard myself. Uh, but then I started thinking about it, and I realized that's kind of the profile that the movie has. And considering the fact that what we have to look at isn't remotely what was intended by Orson Welles, um, I think it's worth taking a look at this trailer just to uh, get a little better idea of what was really supposed to be going on. There's a good story about how Wells was asked on the phone by Columbia Pictures President Harry Cohen what picture he wanted to make, and he spotted If I Should Die Before I Wake by Sherwood King, a paperback on a nearby drugstore rack, and, and chose it without reading it. Actually, the book had been found by William Castle, whose B-movies had impressed Cohen and who had hoped to direct this himself. But Wells co-opted it and took it to Cohen, who handed Castle the treatment and said, You know, Bill, it takes a genius like Orson Welles to find material like this. The stories of its making and unmaking are legion and can be accessed elsewhere, but the bottom line is that the movie has released as a pale shadow of what was intended, recut, redubbed, reshot, remixed, and burdened by an insistent music score that Wells hated. So now it's a movie of brilliant parts but no cohesion. But what memorable parts? The Aquarium, the Alice in Wonderland trial, the Hall of Mirrors shootout, the Crazy House, the Kabuki Theater, and it has Glenn Anders as Grisby, the atom bomb phobe who plots his own murder and gives one of the most unforgettably creepy performances in a Wells film. Cohn was not interested in cinematic flourishes. He wanted a showy vehicle for his star, Wells' soon-to-be ex-wife, Rita Hayworth, now sporting short blonde hair that annoyed Cohn no end. The result is an art film ineffectually shoehorned to fit into a standard studio box. And although it's still worth watching, it's really only as a remnant of what might have been. We did manage over the years to find a reconstituted version of Wells' next mutilated movie, Macbeth, but for Lady from Shanghai, I don't think we'll be that lucky. No further questions.